Hello everyone, welcome to another History Collector's Forum. I'm with Stan and he has a whole bunch of... Training aids. Training aids, there you go. Take it away. Hi, uh, this is dedicated to Company C, 2nd Battalion, 1st Brigade. Uh, in 1969, I was sent there after basic training to be trained as a combat engineer. Or in those days, they used to refer to us as infantry with high school diplomas. All right, and I, over the years, I have found a lot of the training aids at different gun shows that I actually handled when I was there in training. Uh, now, one of my favorite war stories is for those of you who've never been to Fort Leonard Wood, it's called Fort Lost in the Woods, and we all know about climate change. Well, they were way ahead of the game. Uh, we were dressed in, February, in January of 1970. We were wearing heavy rubber boots, long pants with insulation. We had parkas on, we had all kind of gear. You, we looked like guys ready to go into the Chosen Reservoir except we were marched out into the woods to a simulated Vietnamese village, which with one foot of snow and a half inch of ice on top, somehow was not realistic. Anyway, so much for war stories. All right, some of the gear that we were trained on. Over here, we'll start out with commonly called toe popper, or the M14 mine. You take a sledgehammer, make a hole in the ground about the size of a cupcake. You unscrew this, put a detonator in, take the safety lever off, Turn this to arm and leave it there, waiting for some enemy soldier to step on it, and it blows the foot off at the ankle, making him an injury, making his buddies scream and yell, and hopefully two or three of them will be out of the battlefield as they carry him back to the aid station. All right? Next to it here is the famous Bouncing Bettys, all right, or M16 Bounding Mines. Contrary to popular belief in the movies, if you step on it, it doesn't go click, and all your buddies freeze and then somebody comes by and tries to dismantle it. Once you step on it, all you can do is drop to the ground and go, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, the kingdom come, because it's going to go off. And it bounces up. Sometimes it used to be called the castrator. It bounces up, and it spreads uh, BBs off in all directions, shrapnel. All right? And this is the fuse on it. You can also rig it up with a tripwire if you want to mess people up that way. But you cannot, like in the movies, step on it and just stay there while guys try to figure out how to save you. It's all over. You stepped on it, you're going up. All right, trip wires. We were trained to use trip wires. Uh, the yellow is for desert, green is for vegetation. We were trained on the claymore. Again, the dummy claymore, blue mines. We were given quick demolition training. This is a 10 cap blasting machine. Okay, it generates its own electricity. All right, these are called mine cards. These are a quickie course in U.S. landmines. How to, you know, what to do with them, how to set them up. All right, and here's a field manual from 92, mine countermine operations, which includes improvised. Uh, these are cap crimpers. We were taught how to crimp blasting caps, which we did. We had to put our helmet on. We had to hold it over our head and crimp them. I've seen movies where guys do it with their teeth. I would not recommend that because if, you t if you, your teeth are too close to the explosive, your head will be gone. We were taught how to make booby traps using these devices. One of these is a pull one. One of them is pressure release or pressure push down. Uh, this one here is tension release. You cut the wire, it goes off. And this one here was a favorite of a lot of guys, and that was what we used to call the mouse trap. And as soon as you took something off, it would go off. Uh, this was a device that was used to calculate how much explosive you need to blow up things. This is a pseudo blasting cap. Okay, this is a fuse lighter. These are different kind of fuses. And uh, oh, that's dead cord, I'm sure. That's dead corn. This is the fuses, I think, isn't it? I'm losing track. Yeah, this is safety fuse here. Um, 10 cap blasting caps. This is the machine, machine. This is the box you would carry your blasting caps in. And when I was at Fort Bragg, they used to, all the military stores had these for sale like crazy. And I was wondering, are there that many combat engineers there? No, there's just lots of potheads. They used to make their own cigarettes, stick them in there. Ten shots of reefer, okay? So this is a quickie course. Uh, combat engineer, 13 Alpha 10. And uh, good luck out there, HCF. Please like, subscribe. What about this one over here? Oh, God, yeah, go back. Okay. Um, 
For the big boys, this is the anti-tank mines, okay? You unscrew this part here, you put your detonator in there, you then screw this back, and you turn it to arm, and any pressure from a vehicle or a running person will set this off. If it's a person, they'll be vaporized. If it's a vehicle, you'll probably blow the tire or the tracks off the tank. Uh, this one here, I found, is a really early model using the Second World War. And these were commonly issued on half tracks. What they would do is, when a half track was parked for the night, they would pull these off and lay them in a circle around the half track. So if they got attacked at night by a bigger vehicle than a half track, it could blow the wheels off of it or the track. Um, again, this is the book you get when you go to basic uh, AIT. It has everybody's pictures in it pictures of us during training and one of these days I've always said I do it and then I, I stop I'm gonna have to go through and cross index it with guys who with the names on the Vietnam Wall I just didn't have the heart to do it and that's me back in 19 <laughs> back in 1970 all right all right thanks Dan all right take care